بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته One of the wives of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام one of the mother of the believers was an honorable woman from a respected family from Quraysh. She was the cousin of the Prophet ﷺ, which clearly indicates to Muslims that there is no prohibition, none whatsoever, even there is no karaha or it being disliked in Islam for a person to marry his cousin, as the people in the West may consider it as incest. In Islam, this is totally normal. The Prophet married his cousin. The Prophet gave his eldest daughter Zainab to her cousin, and he gave his own youngest daughter, Fatima, to his cousin, Ali ibn Abi Talib, this was normal and totally permissible. And Muslims disregard what the medical professionals may say. There might be cases, but this is not the norm. And when having trust in Allah Azza wa Jal, and following the Quran and the Sunnah and what Allah has made permissible, we cannot come to medicine, sci medical science and simply scratch out what Islam says. So if medical sciences come and say, cupping is harmful, it can be I I infecting with diseases, it does this, it does that. We say, hold your horses. You have no right to speak about something that is proven in the authentic sunnah, which the Prophet had done, not only that, he instructed and recommended us to do it. So we have to draw the line where we tell medical sciences to stop if things interfere with our Islamic practices, we simply tell them stop and know your limits. What is proven in the Quran and the Sunnah, even if the whole world, including the WHO, say that it is wrong, we don't, with all due respect, care. Because we have our Quran and the Sunnah that prevail over all. So the Prophet married his cousin, this honorable woman. Her name was Zainab bint Jahsh bin Rabab ibn Ya'mur al Asadi. Her mother was Umaymah bint Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim, the aunt of the Prophet, والسلام, the paternal aunt. Her marriage has a long story to it. And this is what she's remembered for mostly. If we go back in time, when the Prophet ﷺ was married to Mother Khadija, her nephew, Hakim ibn Hizam, gave her a slave boy. And this slave boy was abducted somewhere in Arabia, and sold as a slave. Otherwise, he's a free boy from a free family and from the Arabs. So, she noticed that the Prophet والسلام, who did not have a son of his own, as we know his Sons all died at a very, very early age. 
and he only had daughters. When she noticed that the Prophet ﷺ took good care of him, she gave it to him as a gift. The Prophet ﷺ accepted that gift. And he loved that boy as his own to the extent that he freed him from slavery. And he was known among the people of Mecca as Zayd ibn Muhammad. So they considered the Prophet to be his father through adoption. And everybody knew that he was the son of Muhammad. And he declared it, alayhi salatu wasalam, if I were to die, he would inherit me. And if he were to die, I would inherit him. And he was known, Zayd ibn Haritha, to be the love of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam as a son. And his son, Usama ibn Zayd, was also the love of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And that is also a different story for another time. Zayd ibn Haritha grew to be a man. So the Prophet والسلام, wanted to get him married. So he selected his own cousin والسلام, and it was well known at the time that there was this caste system which Islam came to abolish and to remove. There is no racism. There is no caste system in Islam. And what would be best to practically prove that to the people than to marry a free slave to an honorable woman from Quraysh? So, the Prophet ﷺ, as some narrations say, went to propose to Zainab. Zainab accepted thinking that he was proposing to her himself. But then he corrected her understanding and said, no, I'd like you to marry Zayd ibn Haritha. And she was shocked and refused. How would a woman in my status marry a freed slave. So the Prophet والسلام, insisted to abolish racism and the caste system in Islam practically. So she argued with the Prophet والسلام, as they were arguing, Allah revealed in the Quran, it is not for a believing man or a believing woman when Allah and his messenger have decided a matter that they should thereafter have any choice about their affair. Subhanallah. This ayah, rarely you will find Muslims referring to it. It is obvious Allah decided in the Quran. The Prophet ﷺ decided in the Sunnah, yet we tend to have second thoughts. We tend to argue. Yes, but why this? By, why not that? And make our own decisions, which goes totally against this ayah. The moment Zainab heard this ayah, may Allah be pleased with her, she submitted her will to Allah. And she said, as long as this is from Allah, then I accept it. So the Prophet ﷺ was happy with that and they both got married. Unfortunately, they both tried to make it work, but sometimes hopes and wishes don't materialize. Zainab could not live with the fact that her husband is a free slave while she is who she is and her parents are who they are. So there was always this resentment, this sort of disrespect, not being content, which to Zaid, may Allah be pleased with him, he's not a blind, a blind man. He can see. 
He can sense and feel. So he wasn't happy in this marriage. He used to always go to the Prophet ﷺ and complain about what he's suffering from, seeking advice or actually seeking approval for divorce because life cannot go on in such circumstances. However, Zayd did not know that Allah revealed to his messenger وسلم, that he would marry Zainab after him and that Zainab would be the mother of the believers. So the Prophet did not والسلام, tell him this, did not expose this. And he kept telling him, fear Allah and keep her with you. So keep your wife and fear Allah. And he kept on repeating this over and over again. Now, it was Allah's plan, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the planner of all planners, to abolish not only racism and this, uh, uh, the caste system, but also to abolish adoption. And this is why in the beginning of chapter 33, Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah Azza wa Jal prohibited adoption, where I take a son or a daughter, give them my name, make them mahram to my relatives as if they are from my own offspring, and giving them a share of inheritance. All of this was abolished was totally prohibited and banned. In verse, and, and, and chapter 33, by the way, Surah Al-Ahzab, is a lot about this incident and a lot about Zainab. May Allah be pleased with her. So he kept on telling him, do not divorce her, do not divorce her, until he reached the level where he cannot tolerate it anymore and he divorced her. Allah Azza wa Jal revealed an ayah. Mother Aisha said, if the Prophet ﷺ were to conceal any ayah, he would have concealed this ayah, but he can't conceal anything because this is from Allah. And if he were to conceal anything, Allah Azza wa Jal would annihilate him. What was this ayah? Allah says in the Quran, and remember, O Muhammad, when you said, to the one whom Allah bestowed favor and you bestowed favor upon. Who's that? It was Zayd, whom Allah gave him the favor and blessing of marrying someone as such as Zainab and had many multiple favors and blessings upon him. So when Zayd, Allah says in the Quran, when Zayd had no longer any need for her, we married her to you in order that there uh, um, uh, not be upon the believers any discomfort concerning the wives of their adopted sons. So going back to the ayah from the beginning, the situation was Zaid divorced his wife. Now it's your obligation, O Muhammad, to marry his wife. But she, she is my daughter-in-law, according to the pre-Islamic uh, uh, ideology of Jahiliyyah. Well, this is what Allah Azza wa wants to abolish. So Allah says, and remember, O Muhammad, when you said to the one on whom Allah bestowed favor and you bestowed favor upon, keep your wife and fear Allah, while you concealed within yourself that which Allah is to disclose, and that is she becoming your wife. And you feared the people, while Allah has more right that you fear him. Why did the Prophet fear the people? Because he was afraid that it will tarnish his reputation when the idol worshippers would say that, look at this man, he married his own daughter-in-law. But actually he did it because she's not his daughter-in-law. And this is what Allah Azza wa Jal commanded us and proved to us in the Quran. And then 
when Zayd had no longer any need for her, and Zayd ibn Haritha is the only companion mentioned by name in the Quran. So you won't find Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, Talha, uh, uh, any of the companions at all. Only Zayd, subhanAllah, his name was mentioned in the Quran. Allah says, we married her to you in order that there not be upon the believers any discomfort concerning the wives of their adopted sons when they no longer have need for them and ever is the command of Allah accomplished. So the moment the Prophet married, alayhi salatu wasalam, Zainab, it was over. The thought of adoption was gone and there was nothing as such. In Islam, a couple are interested in a boy or in a girl to adopt. They can do that, but it's not called adoption. It co it's called sponsorship. So they take the child in their custody. The child is called after his own family, father and, and, and family name. If we don't know who the family name or what the family name is, we give him any name that is not related to us. He grows up knowing that he's not our own child. He's not our own flesh and blood. And he would not inherit. He would not be a mahram to my own daughter, biological daughter, because they're not related. And he's not related to my wife either, unless she suckled him before he was two years of age. Yani, there are a number of... Uh, um, conditions and rules regarding governing this issue. But the main issue is no adoption as known in the West at the moment. So once the Prophet married her, alayhi salatu wasalam, it was known to all people that adoption is no longer existing, that he's not his adopted son anymore, and that they would not inherit one another. Zainab, may Allah be pleased with her, was one of the finest women of her time in terms of religious commitment, in terms of generosity, doing favors to the people, in terms of fearing Allah Azza wa Jal. And this issue of fearing Allah Azza wa Jal, by the way, it's extremely needed in our times. Yes, you might find someone who's practicing with a long beard like myself and looks righteous and pious, short thobe, praising the masjid, but actually he doesn't fear Allah. And you can judge that through his actions, through his interaction with others. And one of the scariest things we read in the Sunnah that one of the four characteristics of hypocrisy, and there are so many of them, one of the characteristics of a hypocrite is when he's at dispute with another, he transgresses. And I've seen this. Two Muslims used to being good friends, best of friends, and for one reason or the other, one wants to break the other. And they start fighting and saying wrong things, backbiting, even lying and manipulating things. A'udhu Billah. This is a clear indication that they don't fear Allah. Zainab did not have this. May Allah be pleased with her. And I'll give you an example. One of her characteristics that she excels when it comes to be compared with other wives of the Prophet ﷺ, is that Allah gave her in marriage to the Prophet ﷺ from seven heavens, from above seven heavens. And she always boasts about this to her co-wives by saying that your parents, your guardians got you married to, your, to the Prophet ﷺ. I was married to the Prophet ﷺ by the instruction of Allah, the command of Allah through Jibreel, the archangel, without any witnesses, 
without any guardian, without any mahar. All of a sudden, the Prophet barged in the house as she was uh, um, cleaning the skin of uh, uh, animals. And this is known as tanning. So she used to tan with her own hands the skins and sell it. And she used to stitch things and sell it. And whatever she makes, she gives to the poor. And this was one of the things that made people praise her more than any other of the Prophet's wives, alayhi salatu wasalam. So she was tanning her skin of that sheep and the Prophet barged in. And she was startled in the beginning, but when she knew that it was Allah who gave her in marriage, she was very pleased and happy with it. And this is why most likely the Prophet threw a feast and prepared food that is not the usual for his other wives, where there was, she there was meat and, and, and lots of good food and invited the companions to feast with him. The hijab was revealed in that incident. The ayahs in Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter 33, of not remaining in the Prophet's house, والسلام, after the food is over, chit-chatting, because this annoys the Prophet, was also revealed at the day when the Prophet والسلام, called the companions to eat. The Prophet والسلام, himself praised her, but they did not understand except after his death. When they asked him, who among your wives is the first to die after you? And he said, the one with the longest arm. In the beginning, as we mentioned before, Sauda was the largest in size. So she was the longest in arm. So they thought that Sauda is the one. But they soon understood the meaning of the hadith when Zainab was the first one to die. Because the Prophet was referring metaphorically to the length of her arm in giving charity to the poor. And among what she's praised for is the compliment of other co-wives, which is different and difficult. Usually, there is this rivalry between the co-wives. So each one is jealous from the other, which may cause them to cross the line. Jealousy usually leads to crossing the line. And if someone does not have support from Allah to fix their own shortcomings, they fail the test because they don't have the fear of Allah. Aisha says that Zainab was sent to communicate with the Prophet ﷺ on behalf of other wives because he used to favor Aisha. And the people, as we mentioned before, used to send their gifts on her day. So the other wives complained and said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, this is not fair. Let the people send their gifts randomly, not to specify the day that you go to Aisha, because then we don't get anything. They first sent Fatima, they sent Umm Salama, and nothing changed. And then Zainab came herself in the presence of Aisha to argue with the Prophet And that is a different story. But listen to what Aisha described Zainab of when she came. She said, I, never, I have never seen a woman so religious, practicing and righteous. She was the only one from the Prophet's wives, والسلام, who was competing with me over the heart of the Prophet, والسلام, meaning that the Prophet loved Fatima, loved Aisha as his favorite wife, but he also loved Zainab due to her, to her beauty, due to her lineage, due to her uh, relationship to him, and so many beautiful things in her. She says, I had never seen a woman 
better in religious practice than Zainab. Not pious as Zainab. Not truthful as Zainab. Not connecting to her kinship as Zainab. And she was huge when it came to giving charity. Now when these compliments come to you from your rival, from someone who's supposed to be envious, you should know what caliber Zainab was. Not only that, in Hadithatul Ifk, that's a very long story, where the hypocrites slandered Mother Aisha and accused her of committing adultery with Safwan ibn al-Mu'attil. May Allah be pleased with him. And the revelation stopped for a month. And it did not give the Prophet ﷺ any hint whether she was innocent or guilty. And the Prophet could not judge. He believes that his wife is innocent. He loves his wife immensely. But this is a case that needs evidence because we have accusations. So the Prophet did not know, alayhi salatu wasalam, three of the great companions of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, slandered Mother Aisha, being affected by the gossiping of the hypocrites. And they declared it. The hypocrites did not. They just whispered among themselves. These three companions fell in the trap of the shaitan. They were Mastah ibn Athatha, the cousin of Abu Bakr. They were Hassan ibn Thabit, the prophet's poet. And there was, or, or, or the third was Hamna bin Jahsh, the cousin of the prophet Hassan, and the sister of Zainab bin Jahsh. She fell in the trap of the shaitan and she said that she fornicated with that great companion. The Prophet والسلام, did not know whether she was innocent or guilty. He used to ask people for circumstantial evidences. So he asked Ali ibn Abi Talib, he asked Usama ibn Zayd, he asked the maid. Then he sent to Zainab bin Jahsh and he said to her, and she's the co-wife, the rival of Aisha, and he said to her, O Zainab, what did she do or what have you seen that might, might be suspicious of Aisha? Zainab said, O Prophet of Allah, I protect my seeing, my eyes and my hearing. I know nothing except goodness about this woman. Ya Subhanallah. Even at times where you can score a point, her fear of Allah Azza wa Jal prevents her. Nowadays when we see men dispute or women, you can tell there is no fear of Allah. They don't see it. You can judge it. You can tell that these people don't fear Allah Azza wa Jal. And subhanallah, she kept on living with the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, a happy wife and a mother of the believers until the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam died. When she died, she stayed about nine years or ten after his death being the first of his wife, wives to catch up with him alayhi salatu wasalam, and she is his wife in Jannah. During these years, she did not change a bit. She used to work with her own hands. Whatever she sells, she collects and she feeds the poor and she gives to the needy. She had no interest in this dunya. And one year, Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, the caliph, the second caliph, collected money from the treasury of the Muslims and he sent it to Zainab. In what, it was a big pile of money. 
So, so she saw it as a burden and she said, may Allah forgive Umar. Why didn't he distribute the money himself to the nine wives of the Prophet ﷺ instead of authorizing me to do so? So the messenger said, oh mother, this is not for the rest of the wives of the Prophet ﷺ. This is only for you. And she said, subhanallah, this is mine? So she asked them to put it on a big plate and she covered it with a dress. And she started to tell her maid, get your hand inside, take a fistful and give it to the house of so-and-so. Take another fistful and give it to the house of so-and-so. And she kept, she, she kept on distributing it to her relatives, the poor of her relatives, the orphans, those in-laws of hers. And she divided it until only little amount of it was left. And when they uplifted the dress to see how much was left, they found 85 dirhams, which is peanuts compared to what was there. When she saw that amount of money, she raised her hand and said, Oh Allah, let this year be my last so that I won't have to see next year's gifts from Umar. And she died that same year. She was 53 years of age. Our mother Zainab bin Jahsh, whom Allah Azza wa Jal gave her in marriage to the Prophet ﷺ from above seven heavens. هذا والله أعلم ونسبة العلم إليه أسلم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين